this six, Lackawanna, New York, like all Great Lake cities, was thriving. Jobs everywhere, money everywhere, steel plants, railroads, grain mills, the docks. Everybody had a new car and a conk. Nanny, seeing what a colored person could have if they just worked hard, rushed back to Farmville, Virginia, her hometown, to bring more of her family up north. Nanny would provide their food, shelter, even clothing. Nanny was like the government if it really worked. <laughs> I have seen or heard stories about Nanny's goodness that stretched beyond reason. That raccoon that Nanny found on the side of the road, she raised him up until he got so big and stubborn that she had to take him out to the woods and let him go. You see, the raccoon had gotten to a habit of climbing up on top of the refrigerator and screaming and bobbing up and down until Nanny would fix his breakfast. <laughs> Always two eggs scrambled soft with toast. <laughs> now you know you can't leave that child in the room by himself. Nanny, I said, that, why don't you leave him with me when you go to work and come fetch him in the morning when you get up? That way you ain't got to worry about him and I ain't got to worry about him. And this is where my journey with Nanny began. You a breath of fresh air to me, boy and we gonna always be together. Cause you, my baby. We straight? That's just who she was. Well done. Good afternoon and welcome back to My Harlem Portraits, the show that wants to shed a light on the fundamental contribution of African Americans to the building of this country and on Black excellence in every field. Talking about Black excellence, we have the utmost of Black excellence right here, right now, who's going to talk to us about what is right now doing on Broadway. And he is an actor, a writer, a director, and a producer for theater, for film, and TV. What more do you want? Welcome. You, I, th I think you have guessed, is Ruben Santiago Hudson. Welcome to My Harlem Portrait. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Finally, uh, get a chance to sit with you for a little bit. Thank you so much to give us your time because you are busy, you're doing your show. so. This is really precious. Wearing these many hats that I just mentioned, you have had a prolific career expanding over four decades and your talent was rewarded with multiple awards, including the highest, Tony, Drama Desk, Obie Awards and Odelka Awards, which I'm very surprised that when I go on Wikipedia and so on, they never mention Adelco Awards. And I know that you find that a very important award. That yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Wikipedia doesn't mention a lot of things and a lot of things they don't get right. So you got to be careful about your resources. Um, there are other places I think that, that particularly in my uh, bios a lot of times, sometimes they edit those, uh, but the Delcos obviously mean a lot to me because it's, uh, it's, um, it's affirmation from my peers uh, in the African-American community, the BIPOC community, the Latin community. It's, uh, it means a lot, always. And I know because I was friend with Miss Grace and I'm very good friend with uh, Jackie Jeffries now mm -hmm. that you have supported Odelco very, very, very much. So yes, absolutely. that's why I wanted to mention that. In 2020, we're gonna talk about only the last two uh, works that you did before this, because otherwise we would be here for hours, <laughs> okay? <laughs> In 2020, you adapted August Wilson's My Rainey's Black Button into a film on Netflix, produced by Denzel Washington, directed by George Wolfe, and starring two giants, Viola Davis 
and the late Chadwick Bosman, for whom I think it was his last work. And he got two of the film five Oscar nominations. Tell us about that experience and how difficult it was to adapt Wilson into a movie. Well, I, I think anytime you write a screenplay, it's a tremendously difficult, you know, a task to do because you have a lot of people to satisfy. Uh, you have you have producers, you have directors, you know, and also in this particular instance, because I was adapting one of my heroes' work, one of my mentors' work, and one of my dear brother's work, August Wilson, which also I had to try to please him, even though it's, uh, he's not here. So posthumously, I had to please him as well. I, I, I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours and days with him uh, collaborating uh, when he was alive. You know, I did several of his plays. Yes. I produced his plays. Uh, and I also did his one-man show, the first person to ever do that because of his beckoning, because of his asking. So I really had him looming over me more than anything. And I wanted to honor August. And so uh, there's a lot of cooks in that kitchen. And, and, and eventually <laughs> I would have to make sure that everybody there would have some sort of uh, be pleased to a certain degree. And also me, I cannot be so selfless that I don't feel some satisfaction in what I'm doing just to have a payday. It ended up being a luminous time because the movie was incredible. George did an extraordinary yes. job. And Denzel was very supportive of me as well. And obviously Chadwick was brilliant as well as Viola Davis and the rest of the cast. So uh, in the end of it, I, I was, I think we all were very pleased. We'd have liked it won those Oscars for Chadwick, you know, which was a big, you know, in Viola, it was a big, like, we were like, what? Guy yeah. won the Oscar, wasn't even there. And Chadwick wasn't there because he wasn't alive. But if he was alive, he'd have been sitting right there as regal as possible and as beautiful as possible. Yeah. When I heard about his passing, I, I couldn't believe it. I was in Italy and it, it just, uh, whew, it's something that's so young, you don't, you, you really can't expect that. And he, and he was amazing until the end. So, mm -hmm. and nobody knew, I mean, we didn't know it was the end, so. No, was, and the thing about Chadwick, before we move on him, was his grace, and his, the power that he understood that he had and how he wielded that power. He did positive things with his power. Yes. He, he inspired others like him and also inspired, inspired actors to make sure that they always remembered that the shoulders they were standing on and that we always had to do our work with integrity. Now, that's something that gets lost when money gets involved sometimes. The people yes. that pay in money don't care about your humanity or your integrity as a, as a person of color many times. And so you have to sometimes fight for that. And I've had to fight for that for four decades in many instances, in most instances, actually. You have that, I know. You have this, that same integrity. I've seen you for a long time now, and I follow you because I love everything you do. And the fact that I was able to have an interview in a matter of the week also talks about how a uh, approachable you are, although you are a star. You really are a star. You are a star. No. Oh, yes, you are. But that's why you are so amazing in that, because you don't, you don't take yourself seriously. You haven't forgotten the shoulders you stand on, like you just said. Mm -hmm. And like I saw Chadwick saying, because I saw him at the, the Apollo Theater when he came in person to present uh, the um, the great movie that, of course, right now, like, uh, oh my God, the great movie that he did. You're talking about the uh, Wakanda, the Black Panther? Yeah, movie? Wakanda, my God, yeah. yes. I saw it there and he came and present that and he was a beautiful, beautiful person. So yes, I sir. totally agree with you. In 2017, you directed the Broadway revival of August Wilson's Jitney, which received six Tony nomination, won a Tony, Freedom a Desk, and other awards, including Outer Critics Circle Award, Drama League, and New York Drama Critics Circle Awards. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. I saw that too, and it was wonderful. Well, Jitney was a 
a promise that I made to August because I wanted his final play. When I say final play, the final play of the 10 play cycle, the American century cycle, uh, each play chronicling a different decade in American uh, of the 20th century uh, of uh, African-Americans journeys in America, mainly in Pittsburgh. Only Ma Rainey was set in Chicago, but all had been done except Jitney. So when he was ill, I promised him that I would make sure, it, it, do everything in my power. I don't know if I could make sure, mm-hmm. but do everything in my power to see that final play, which was Jitney, which had had a hugely successful run off Broadway and in the regional theaters and in London, but never Broadway. So I said, let's finish the 10 plays. Nine of them have been crowned. Let's crown the ninth and then put all those jewels in your crown, August. And so it was 11 years, almost 11 years before I can get a yes. I received no's yearly, monthly, daily from so many people, from so many theater owners, from so many producers. No, no, no. (laughs) <laughs> you know, they all had different reasons. Some you've never directed on Broadway. I'm a director. Broadway is a location. There are yes. people doing stuff <laughs> off Broadway. There are people doing stuff in Harlem. There's people doing stuff in Brooklyn that are, are worthy of Broadway. And then there's people doing stuff on Broadway that is not, in my opinion, worthy of the highest level of artistic integrity. So maybe that's a reason. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe they didn't like me. Maybe they didn't think the play was worthy. Uh, I don't know what it was, but... I don't ask why, I just say, can we make this happen? Do you want to help me make this happen? And they say, no, you know, I'll thank them for their time and move on down the line. You and know, you so, put that wrong. <laughs> right, but we got it. We had one yes. And that was the Manhattan Theater Club, Lynn Meadow and Barry Grove there. And uh, it took them 18 months to think about it, but they thought about it and that 18 months was worth that wait. Yeah. And they said, come on, Ruben, we want you to be here. We want to do things differently at Manhattan Theater Club. And we want to do... Uh, 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 we want to have a charter that includes all the great work, all the good work, all, all kind of people uh, in our theater. So I put Jitney in and I haven't left. I'm there again with Lackawanna Blues. I'm coming back with Skeleton Crew and, and I'm, I'm their artistic advisor. So that started a relationship that will last and hopefully be very fruitful for a lot of people of color. And that is exactly what I was going to say now. So we are right going into that because you, I was going to say, and now you have returned to MTC Friedman Theater on Broadway with your autobiographic, soulful, one-man show, Lackawanna Blues, to celebrate the life of the exceptional woman who raised you, Miss Rachel or Nanny, as you and everybody else. Colder. So tell us the origin of the show, please, because I know that it premiered in 2001 at the famous Joseph Papp Theater, which is an institution in New York, for which you won an Adelka Award for the best solo performance. Yes, I did, and, and won an Obie Award. And Bill Sims uh, and I won Obies for that. Bill Sims Jr. was my collaborator on that. He was a musician. Uh, an extraordinary human being, uh, uh, advocate uh, for humanity. He passed away, um, unfortunately, uh, uh, three years ago before we, two years ago before we can get this play to Broadway. And um, he's the one that pushed me to bring it to Broadway. When we did it in 2001, Black Water Blues at the Public, commissioned by George C. Wolfe, uh, who was running it at the time. Uh, it was just a love letter to my mother. I just wanted to say thank you to my mother and all the women in all the communities, not just African-American communities, pri- primarily African-American communities, but Latin communities, Asian communities, Italian communities, Irish communities. There are these women yes. who, who, who don't seem to ever get their praise until they're gone about actually the cohesiveness that they have in their communities and also the power that they have in supporting and nourishing more than just feeding you, nourishing your soul, nourishing your mind, guiding you, and disciplining you when you needed it. These women needed to be heralded in my, in, 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 in my opinion. And particularly, I wanted to personally and specifically say thank you to Nanny for her grace and generosity and humanity and for what she had given to me. And I didn't know it would be so universal. In this case, it's the specific becoming universal. Yes. Because my specific story became as I continue to do it, people were waiting at the stage door, Korean women, Jewish women, <laughs> people would be there. That's my uncle, that's my grandmother, that's my aunt. And I would be like, I'm talking about Nanny. No, no, you're talking about my mother or my uncle even. And I'd be like, wow, 
And so we closed it. And then all of a sudden, 9-11 hit. And okay. everybody wanted it again because of the, the joy of the play, but also because of the love and community. And it also is a generous play. So it seems like a one-man play. And it's, yes, I wrote it, I directed it, and I star in it. But there's a gentleman that's sitting next to me right now. It's Junior Mack, great blues musician. Yeah. But he's sitting in Bill's seat. And that's Bill's seat that it was made for Bill. Now it's made for Junior. Junior was Bill's bandmate in the Heritage Roots Orchestra, All right. the Grammy-nominated band. And when, when Bill passed, I didn't know what to do. And I even said to Bill when he was very sick, I don't think I'm going to do it, Bill. I know you wanted to do it, but if you're not going to be there, I can't do it. And he said to me, I'm going to be there. You just won't see me, but I'll be there. And wow. so I hang his hat. I hang his hat on the uh, hat rack in the back. So his hat that he wore forever in that play, with his sweat in it, with his brain in it, with his heart in it, is on that rack and every night when I leave the stage I touch the hat that's so beautiful and you know it's very funny because I I went to see your show last Thursday and I noticed that hat and I asked myself why is the hat there this is so strange it's you know I believe in in signs your show was amazing to me and um, but first I want to talk about the movie. You adapted that then into another award-winning and star-studded HBO movie in 2005. And when I knew that I was going to see your show, I went to look for the movie and I watched the movie. And I, the first thing that I thought is how did it, because I didn't know that your play came before the movie, <laughs> the one in 2001. I didn't know that, right? So I'm thinking, how did it turn this movie with all this character into a one-man show? This is incredible, especially with the people you had in that movie. I mean, Ipatha Merkerson, who plays Nanny, who is just formidable, uh, makes you cry, makes you laugh. Uh, it, it, it's just wonderful. And then uh, Terence Howard, Rosie Perez, Jimmy Smith, Ernie Hudson, Hudson, sorry, Louis Gossett Jr., I mean, and more. So tell me, how difficult was it? But now I know it couldn't have been that difficult because you did that before. <laughs> well, as I said, it's always difficult when you have a lot of people sitting around the table giving you notes, mm -hmm. but it makes it even more, which you need notes because you can't do it yourself, but you want constructive notes. And, and a lot of times you get them and sometimes people like give you a note and you're like, why would you ask that? Well, give me that note. But with Lackawanna Blues, I was kind of protected in a certain way because I had Halle Berry producing. I had Vincent Serencione producing, who was my manager at the time, and I had uh, um, myself. Uh, so the three of us was a pretty strong little little corner, you yeah. know. So <laughs> particularly with Hallie at the time, she had just won an Oscar. So, um, but I still got a, got a lot of notes. But there was a couple people in that room giving me notes who were extraordinary thinkers, wow. and they would give me great notes. And there was a couple of people that were there just sucking up air, just taking up mm -hmm. feet. <laughs> but the, uh, ultimately, I had more support than I ever thought was possible. And it's always harder when it's your story. Yes. Because I know how these people smell, how they talked, how they walked. I knew what was important to them. I knew what kind of sweaters they wore and the textures of their clothes. I knew where the stains on their ties were. And I remembered these things because I was a child and sometimes I'd wear the same tie every day, but they would put on the tie. <laughs> Why are you putting on the tie? He's not going anywhere. He's going to the store. He's going, going to sit in here and play cards. But that was, you know, the way that they wanted to present, present themselves. So I remember these things. And those things are important when I do the characters in the role. Now, looking at the movie, to cast that movie with people who they felt from their own personal experience that this movie was as important to them mm -hmm. as any movie could ever possibly be. You know, and so, and then to get S.E. Pather Merkerson yes. was a godsend. I told S.E. Pather Merkerson, because I couldn't reveal it. I told her a year earlier when I was writing it, I got something for you, but 
you know, I think I got something because I didn't know if I could get her past six executives. Yes. George, whether George wanted her, whether because there's a lot of approval that has to go on. So I couldn't promise her the role. Mm -hmm. So she always laughed about that. You told me you had something for me. You might have something for me. But obviously, George was smitten by her and uh, as were the producers. And once we cast her, you know, she, we had a rock and foundation yes. for that movie. And then we had friends. Jimmy Smith is a very close friend. Jeffrey Wright, Rosie Perez, all very close friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a lot of phone calls opposed to auditions. But we had some auditions to get people like Macy Gray, and Terrence Howard, and Michael K. Williams. Um, so they had, I didn't know them as well, so they auditioned. And uh, But a lot of people, half that movie was people getting good a phone call. Most staff, you want to do this movie? Yeah, and I don't know, my schedule, you see the <laughs> schedule, you know. And so uh, that movie is, is means the world to me, but, uh, but even more so the play, because it's me revisiting and spending time with people who spent time with me growing up and helped mold this little boy into this, this old man now, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, nothing old in you, not yet. You got time to get old. Okay, I hope so. Long time. I mean, this show, it was so amazing that when I saw it, I was really mesmerized by the fact that you were able, because I've seen, I love one solo shows. So I've seen a few, but usually they use props or they use custom changes and so on. You were slipping in and out of these characters with an ease, with a maestria, we would say in Italian, a maestria, without use of any of this, just with you. And you just turned into another person in a matter of seconds. And I was seeing those people. At, at, the end of, at the end of the evening, I really believed I met Manny, I met her husband, I met all the characters that have populated your life when you were growing up. You're giving life to them. So I thought it was amazing. And to top it all, the, your harmonica, I didn't know you could play like that. I mean, you are a virtuoso in playing the harmonica. And you are dialoguing and, and with, with um, Junior Mac with his guitar in a way that is, is like a, a chant, is like a, a melody. So for me, this is one of the best shows I've seen. Thank you. Thank, you know, it's, it's interesting because sometimes, well, I appreciate that was That was great. great. Um, I, I, it kind of makes me shy even listening to, to such wonderful comments. But you know, with Junior Max some time, I'll I'll do something on the harmonica just virtuoso. I think I'm, so I'm gonna do something that's virtuosity. And it's just me me showing off. And then all of a sudden I'll go up to him and listen to the guitar and then I'll say, watch me find my rhythm and say, boop, fa, do the lip fa fa do the lipo. And he just he's strumming. And he and we kind of love that moment where I just come and just hang with him and just say, watch me just get on the train that you that you that you just started down the track, opposed to me. You, because the first thing the audience want to know is what is he doing? Can he play that thing? So I say, yeah, I can play this thing. Yeah. And then I then I go back to Junior and say, let's play this together. And then that rhythm we get, you know. And then I get I do this one thing that that always messes with him. I say, boo da boo da boo da boo da boo da boo da boo. You know the the um play this thing like like this is the one this is the one that August gave me. This is the you won't be able to tell. Uh, um, Ma, Mos. No, don't worry about Meister Claus. Oh, uh, wrong side. You see? Okay. Can you see? Steve, see seven, seven guitars. Oh yes, that's where and, you. But look, it. look at what it says on the top. No, I can't see that. To, let me get this. To Ruben from August. See it? Oh my God! Yes, I can see it. I say. Come on, yes. <laughs> So wow, thank 
Thank you. Thank you. That's August is that's August is harp. I don't play it a lot. This it's is August history. Game. You're giving me a piece of history right now. Thank you. I I'm Look. appreciating this. This is wonderful. I I'm I'm humbled that you chose this show to do that. I, I didn't choose. I didn't know I was gonna do that. But we were talking about the harmonica, and I was like, yeah. oh well. I have my, my box right here, you know, because I have to practice got the show tonight. Wonderful. Fantastic. Okay. Unfortunately, we are towards the end of this. I wish I could go on forever. But that, first of all, please, until when is the show on, in, on Broadway? Because it's going to finish soon, right? Right, right. Unfortunately, because I have to go into Skeleton Crew, which I'm directing, Dominique Morisot's brilliant play, a skeleton crew about a Detroit auto factory, a group of people who are trying to sustain everything that's important to them, their lives, their community, and their jobs. And so it's very poetic. I'm going into that next. Right now, Lackawanna Blues is on Broadway at the Manhattan Theater Club's Samuel Friedman Theater on West 40, 47th Street. And we'll be there only until November 12th, unfortunately, uh, which is a Friday night. So it's just odd to, to end on a Friday, but I need like five or six days of rest yeah. before I go into the other thing. Because in Lackawanna Blues, I give you everything I have every night. And yeah. I just have to go home and rebuild because I have to, I have to, you know, I used to always talk about, and I still talk about when I'm teaching as an artist to really reap the benefits of your true soul and, and have your song accepted in the world. You have to bring something to the altar. You have to sacrifice something. So each night I sacrifice a lot. We're there to November 12th. The tickets are on sale. And if you go to Lackawanna Blues, uh, Lackawanna Blues, hold on. I'm going to show you how to get this. Lackawanna on Broadway. Yes. One word. Dot com. Put in the name R-U-B-E-N, all caps. Ruben, caps, R-U-B-E-N. Lackawanna on Broadway dot com. You will get you can start your tickets at $49. Yes. And you could jump in where you want to, 49 or 200. I think the 49s are great because that theater is amazing. Yes. You know, uh, also, if you go to the box office an hour before the show, there are rush tickets. So, and sometimes people don't pick up their house tickets, and you might be in the best seat in the house for $39. So, oh. I, I recommend if you're in Times Square near 47th, day of show, day of, Walk Let's up to go. the box office. But, you know, also Lackawanna on Broadway.com. Put in R-U-B-E-N, all caps, and get your discount. You know, because I want to see you there. Particularly, if you want a great seat, that last four days, because the tickets just went on sale, the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, those tickets just went on sale, and there are great seats available. Uh, I just steered some buddies of mine that's coming up from Philly. They want to come this week. I said, Look at next week. The tickets are great, you know, and I hope they don't stay great. I hope they fill it up. <laughs> Wonderful. I might come back and see it again because I love it. Bring some people, push some people un un until November 12th. Uh, Lackawanna Blues at the Friedman Theater on West 47th Street. Please come. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for your time. And sorry it took us so hard to, to connect, but I want to thank you for your time and, and your persistence. And I tried to hang with you and hang with you. We finally connected. And it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. It was really nice of you to do that because you someone else might have thought, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. I don't want to do it. <laughs> so no, 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 no. So I, I've owed you, I've owed you some time since we first met. I told you I was going to do interviews. And we're going to do some more. Yes, please. Because I would like to do it. I would like exactly, exactly. And I, and I want to talk to you about Italy anyway. That's you know, that's one of my favorites. And I just found out from my sister who's doing a genealogy. Yes. I just found out that my great grandmother was Sicilian. I did not know that. I am not surprised. I did all. not know that. They brought her to Puerto Rico. <laughs> if you came to Italy, if you came to Italy, they would think you're Italian. <laughs> well, we, so, we're yeah. going to talk more about that. But thank you for your time. Thank you. And Bye -bye. welcome back again. And thank you to our viewers. See you next time, next Saturday, 1230 for my Harlem portraits. Take care.